Peace to everyone. Sorry it's been a while. I've been kind of busy being sick, not just with COVID, but then afterwards having a um, <clears throat> infection in my chest. Uh, you can still kind of hear it. I'm taking antibiotics, z pack things like that, and um, and <gasps> as well, uh, not weed, the um, uh, albuterol. So um, <clears throat> I've been unable to respond to a lot of messages. My good buddies Blackout and uh, you know Gator Sinju have been um, hit me up, and I just haven't been responding. I've been I haven't been answering phone calls. I've been really like unable to um, get around to that because it's been busy. Um, other difficult personal stuff was happening. So, but as I was recovering from the albuterol I took at the hospital yesterday. I was up till four in the morning um, reading a bunch of stuff on RootsWeb, uh, a bunch of Creek documents on the 1832 Parson Abbott roll. So <clears throat> this is probably going to be a part one or a prequel to more because I don't have all my notes written out. So I cannot give you the proper video right now that I want to give you. But this deserves maybe a series of videos. In fact, there's so many documents that I would like to print out and read to you guys that are very important. Like I have some of them, I'm pretty sure, in some of my random goodies, but I really need to get more of this stuff so I can read it to you and uh, share with you guys <clears throat> the amount of effort. Let's forget the politics for a second. Let's look at the effort that was made and some of the rationale behind the Parson and Abbott role. So, as a backdrop, in 1828, you had Chili McIntosh, um, son of William McIntosh, uh, leading you know, basically his dad's faction of the people after his dad was, um, you know, again, executed for ceding away land um, in the Treaty of Indian Springs, 1825. I want to get that right. I'm going off the top of my head. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but it's around that time, maybe 1826. Um so, yeah, he, he took his people, took his, you know, you know the Perrymans, he took others, and they, they skedaddled, okay? And <clears throat> so, but they never gave up their rights in the old country, technically. You see, here's the funny part, is that you had a bunch of lower creeks, mostly lower creeks that went with Macintosh. Maybe all lower creeks, I have to double check that. But you still had lower creeks back in the old country, in the old, you know, Creek Nation. But you had now those who are from Western Creek Nation, meaning what is now Oklahoma Creek Nation, uh, which had like more than, like at least double the territory, probably like quadruple the territory that it, you know, it has now, uh, courtesy of the Civil War. But in the midst of all the discussion, Chili McIntosh, like he, you know, they signed legal documents recognizing that so-and-so has the authority to basically gather money on behalf of those who are citizens of X, Y, or Z towns that are, you know, or whatever. They, they, they're they citizens of Creek Nation. They still want... Because what's happening at this point, so backdrop, 1832 treaty is designed to basically help... Okay, I'm getting political for a second. Help the Creek Indians who are, in, who are still back east to leave their homelands and resettle in um, what is now Oklahoma. And so what happened is um, they're making an accounting of all the heads of household, which are the, you know, the husbands. And, um, you know, the number, the number of wives, children, slaves, although they don't distinguish between, you know, sex or gender, which to me are the same thing, um, on that, uh, on the roll for the slaves. They just mentioned the number of slaves. And I think it was Parson did the lower creeks, if I'm not mistaken, and Abbott did the uh, upper creeks. And so they had to divide the work and they had to add it to the same book. So they each had their own books, but then like, I think it was Parson added the lower creek stuff to Abbott's bigger book. And I've seen a uh, microfilm of this stuff. You know, I actually have a couple printouts of some of that. And Parson Abbott, if you can trace back, look, for one, if you can even trace yourself back to the Parson Abbott role directly, even being a, a Oklahoma Creek, you're kind of lucky. It, it, it's not so easy to do unless you have distinct, very distinctive ancestors. 
um, who lived a long time because, or who are at least, you know, chiefs of renown because I, I can't, I'm having a hard time tracing back. I have a couple ancestors that I'm pretty sure are on that role, but I'm not hundred percent sure that it's actually them, but I'm like mostly sure. I'm thinking who else could it be because no one else has that name, things like that. So, but I believe that the Porch Banner Creek Indians, the Machis Bandalore Creek Indians, the Florida bands, the the, Tom, the Tama bands, I believe they all trace back to the Parson Abbott role and that's how they have legitimacy with the government. Although some are, are federal, some are state. I mean, it's really, I mean, Porch Band did get some federal money, you know, and had to technically sue Creek Nation of Oklahoma to get their portion of their rights to be considered Creek and get monies that were not originally given to them or whatever. There was something that happened in the 1950s regarding that, regarding um, Calvin McGee, Chief Calvin McGee. So, um, but anyways, Parson Abbott is important for establishing that you are in fact Creek Indian. It is very important in establishing the fact that you are actually Creek Indian. This is where you come from. You can trace back to some ancestor before that, but they're not on the Parson Abbott role. It's like it, it may or may not matter. But this is where, because at this point they're saying, you're Indian, this is your land, we're going to buy it off you, or you can try to keep it, see what happens. But, and here's the thing, so much swindling was going on, so much land theft, um, such corruption was going on, and yet these white guys were not only defrauding Indians, but were defrauding each other just as much, if not more. I mean, you got some choice words coming from Parson and Abbott and, and the others associated with these back and forth correspondences because that's what, I mean, so on Roots Web, you'll find, you'll find the role or you have a transcription of the 1832 Parson Abbott role, but then you'll have also links to transcriptions of various letters. And there's times where they actually specifically bring in Chili Macintosh back to the old country to deal with, with, with certain matters. And he spent a bunch of his own remaining monies to, like, help bring more of his own people back east. Now, there's 1828 uh, migration, which is Shirley McIntosh and the Perrymans and all them. Then you have the 1836-ish removal, uh, which is the Trail of Tears. Prior to that, but after the 1828, and then after the Trail of Tears as well, you have self-migrations. Self-immigrations, self-immigrants. So a lot of stuff was happening. And one thing that has been established by these letters that I've seen is that you have, <clears throat> so they're trying to buy the land. But, but even until like 1848, they still hadn't actually sold some of the land. Like the federal government bought it for whatever price from, from our people. But then later on, they, um, <laughs> they still hadn't sold it to the white man yet, to the white citizens of Georgia, Alabama, Okay. Like, or at that point, it would have been probably just Alabama. But, uh, because Georgia was pretty much already, like, taken over at that point. But, but yeah. So, all this land, um, and it's interesting. So, it's interesting about some of the letters is that they're trying to, to, you know, figure out, okay, if this person is a, is a free person of, as a free black man, a free color, person of color, are, are we going to recognize them if they're living in, in Creek Nation? Like, they might have been slaves to a Creek Indian. Who knows? Probably were at some point, and now they're free. This is before the whole Freedmen thing came about and before the Treaty of 1866. It was like 30-plus years prior to that. They're saying, okay, well, do we count them as, as basically as an Indian, essentially? Because uh, as a citizen of the nation, because they, they live... And, and this is them asking, like, other federal representatives. This isn't them asking Creek Nation. But this is the masking other federal representatives about this. And the answer is like, yeah, if the person is a free person of color and they're, they're married, they've got kids, they're accepted by the nation, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, then they get a, they get a, re, a, a reserve, which is basically a plot of land. Um, then they ask, okay, what if the person is like half Creek, half black, and they have a wife that is a slave? Like, you know, do we make him ahead of household and they, they decide yes that as well what if the guy's a white man married to a creek indian woman and uh he's been accepted by the people and his wife is indian like do we make him head of household and they said yes 
um, because, you know, he's married into them already, he's accepted by them, and he has kids with them. So, yeah, he's basically Creek. <laughs> so, again, it's the federal government deciding these things, not the Muscogee people deciding these things. I want to make that distinction as well, just for modern, modern political purposes. But it is, um, it's very interesting going through these documents and just seeing more of the history behind and surrounding. And like they made the role, but then they had to ask questions and they had to do some amending to the role or potential amending to the role because they had to make sure they're getting everything correct. And, and then you have issues like, okay, well, you were given this plot of land. Well, then you, tr you you did some improvements and maybe sold this, you know, piece of land and got this one from your neighbor. Well, that doesn't fly with Uncle Sam. The original plot is what you're going to get paid for by Uncle Sam. Uh, improvements are not, doesn't matter. You are not getting reimbursed for that if you sell the land to us. That sucks. Okay. But that's, that's what happened. Um... But it's interesting they brought Shirley McIntosh into that and how, how he was involved. Like, considering that some considered his father a traitor and a sellout, but then the people that followed Chile were the, the followers of his father, William McIntosh, and how they were rebuilding Creek Nation uh, in, in the West before, and I mentioned that before, how, like, when leaders like Apothe Hole and others started showing up, McIntosh and others were like, no, 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 you guys, we're going to kill you guys. Like... But then, like, the other ones, the, the new coming Upper Creek leaders were like, no, 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 we're going to take over the government now. It's our it's our government. It's our Creek Nation. Basically, like, and it wasn't that Apofle Hola was necessarily completely saying that himself. It was, but it was, you know, people that came with him, at least, that were of that opinion. Um, there was a tiger. I can't remember his first name, but he also went with McIntosh uh, in regards to the Parson Abbott role. But, yeah, imagine, like, he's like, okay, yeah, um... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell my plot of land, my reserve, to this guy. And these other four guys here as well, they're doing the same. And this is the legal document that we're recognizing that we're giving, that we're selling this land to them and their descendants forever. Or, you know, or for, it, for wow, what's that term they use? A legal term. Jeez. Um, I'm not a lawyer. So uh, I have to, um, I have to remember, I have to look at that again. But anyways... Um, something simple, um, I don't know. Uh, anyways, so yeah, like Chile McIntosh was signing his own personal land away, his own personal land rights for money because he already had, he's already living in you know, the West and he's, he's trying to get his people, those who want to follow him out of there before things get worse. I look at this situation, it makes me think about the whole, like, you know, was William McIntosh a traitor or was he a guy who understood that the storm was coming and that things were going to get worse and we need to sell and get out of Dodge because it's going to get worse for us if we don't leave. Considering that George Troop, governor of Georgia, was his racist first cousin on his dad's side. Because um, Colonel, I was a Colonel McIntosh or Major, whoever, the Highlander, um... Williams, William McIntosh Sr., I think. His sister was the mother of George Troop, uh, if I recall my genealogy correct. So, anyways, you, you, you know, so William McIntosh knew what was going on. I think he understood that, yeah, he's about to commit a capital crime by ceding away lands, but at the end of the day, it's the only way it's going to save Creek Nation in the long run. I think, he, I think he ultimately knew that. I know people definitely disagree with me on that, and they may have very good reason to, and I will continue to formulate my opinion as I get more information. But this information I have right now about Chili McIntosh saying, look, I sold all my stuff. All my stuff so I can basically outfit these people to get them, set up some posts to get them some supplies so they can travel west. And if I don't, if I don't get payment on behalf of these people, if I don't collect this now, I can't wait till like whenever you're, because they're delaying it at some point. He's like, if I don't get this soon, this is going to make me look bad. My life will be at risk. My reputation will be at risk. And their confidence in you is going to be at risk. And in all fairness to the Parson Nabbit guys that were there, some of these guys were actually good guys, you can tell, because they're saying, look, if you're the head of household, you got a family, you got kids, you're the head of household, you know, but what about these old couples, you know, that, that uh, or, or old parents that, you know, their kids grew up and their, their spouse is dead. 
Um, what do we do about, I mean, we should, shouldn't we give them a reserve as well? Because, you know, it seems like the right thing to do. Like that happens in this, when you look at these letters. And so these guys aren't all bad guys, but there's an obvious political situation going on where it's like, okay, well, we're going on the creeks are going to move and it's probably going to happen for sure, whether they like it or not, but we're going to try to make it as good as we can while on the way. And yeah, they're getting cheated and we got to make sure they don't get cheated. We got to make sure they get paid by, you know, correctly and things like that. Like, there, there was an effort made by people involved in this to try to make good on a bad situation for us. Um, I have to give them credit where it's due, even though I don't like what happened. I got to give them credit where it's due because I'm reading their words. I'm, I'm look, I, I know there's a lot other details surrounding what was happening, and that's why I look at it and say, none of these guys are perfect, but they weren't. Those compiling the records were not bad men. They were trying to do right by everybody and really trying to make an effort to do things the legal way and also the just way as best as they could. So anyways, uh, that's kind of my thought on the Parson Abbott role. Um, I would love to have a chance to read you guys some of these letters. Uh, that would probably take several videos to do that. Some of them are short. Some of them are kind of long. Some of them have a little bit of legal jargon. Um, some of these might be short, but still require some explanation just because it'd be entertaining. But um, that'll have to come at a later time. I hope I can do that. Um, I really hope I can do that. So, but um, I'm trying to get over my sickness. Um, I'm planning to go see my mom soon. My wife is doing a little trip with some some of the family. I'm going to take a, a I'm going to take a simultaneous trip to see my mom and uh, get out of here for a bit. I need to get out into the country and maybe chop some wood or something. I'm. I really don't like city life. I don't like hot weather like this, but, um, but, uh, I'm here for my family. So, you know, but, uh, I still need to go chop some wood and do some woodsman stuff, do some Indian stuff. You know, I gotta do something that's going to keep me, you know, more sane. So, and I got to see family and friends and loved ones. So don't ever forget your family, your friends, your loved ones, you know, reach out when you can and try to reach out more often. So, Anyways, thank you all for watching. Um, I look forward to making the next video, but I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, being better prepared if it's going to be on this particular topic. But if you guys, if you guys want, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a link in the description of this video um, that'll show you the Parson Abbott role from RootsWeb. And also, it'll, that same page will link you to all these different letters you can read. It is fascinating to me, as a guy who loves history, who has now kind of a love-hate relationship with history, because I see how much bad it exists on both sides and how there's also good on both sides. There's never a clear cut good guy and bad guy. And we have to recognize that. And things are not always as black and white as they seem. Sometimes when it comes to certain things, it is black and white. But for the most part, history is very, very gray. There's a lot of black, there's, there's black and white on both sides. Every single time, just about, almost. Um, I don't wanna say every single time, but you know, a good amount of the time. So, um, yeah, don't throw the baby out with bathwater, I guess. But um, anyways, let me know what you think. I'll talk to y'all later. Um, no. And um, uh, Hadam Chi Chakalis.